It's time for your Low Country Real Estate Market Update. It's the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. Brian is one of the top 1% real estate agents in Charleston. Find him online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Or call him at 843-345-1273. Now, broadcasting from the WTMA studios, here's your host, Brian Beatty. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. I'm your host, Brian Beatty. And for those of you that uh, consistently tune into this program, welcome back. For those of you that are tuning in for the first time, let me give you an idea of what this show is all about. I like to take my experiences as somebody that's been in the residential real estate market here in Charleston for the past 12 years. I've done about a thousand transactions to the tune of about half a billion dollars in real estate volume. And uh, I share those experiences with you. I give you an idea of what's going on in this market. I separate fact from fiction. Uh, I help you guys become more informed consumers. And that's certainly what we're going to do over the course of the next hour. There's a lot of information out there right now, which frankly is getting worse and worse. It's becoming a bit of an epidemic, this this uh, collection of misinformation about the real estate market, and really about all things. Uh, and I really want to highlight a few articles that just, just grinded my gears as I was reading through them this week. Uh, and I want to help you guys better understand how to approach this information, make informed decisions so that when it comes time for you to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, you get a good deal, you have a very low amount of stress, and you're working with a professional that can truly help you. So that's what we have planned over the course of the next hour. But I want to first introduce uh, a really good friend of mine, business partner, Derek Goulet with Fairway Independent Mortgage. He's on the show with me this morning, and we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about really the cost of waiting to transact in real estate, as well as some things that you need to know if you're considering buying a home. So uh, let me first get this out of the way. If you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, you're welcome to give me a call. That's what we do during the week, of course. My number is 843 345 one two seven three. That's my cell. You can call or text that number eight four three three four five one two seven three, or you can visit my website listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. So, without any further ado, let me introduce uh, my good buddy Derek. Derek, good morning. Good morning, Brian. How are you today? Doing well, thanks. So, um, Derek, tell us just a little bit about yourself and your background before we kind of get into the nitty gritty here. So. Uh Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> Just Thanks. kidding. Um, so my background in the mortgage space was, uh, I've kind of been around it since I was little. Truthfully, my parents have owned mortgage companies off and on since I was really quite young. And then um, in college, my dad needed help. And so not knowing what I wanted to do with my life, I said, you know, I'll give this a whirl. Well, 19 years later, a uh, few iterations uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I've kind of morphed that business into my own and here I am loving to help people all the time. Awesome. So I want to jump right into things because we've got a lot of content that we want to cover and we want to obviously help as many people as possible. So um, when we talk about, you know, kind of inspiring people to act now versus uh, kind of sit on things and think about things, I, I want to first kind of differentiate between the agents that push people into a decision before they're ready because they simply want a commission. You know, we've, we all talk about having commission breath in our industry, you know, just trying to get the deal done so they can move on to the next person, collect a check and, and, you know, put it in the bank and they're done. But then there are times where the buyer is ready. You know, we've been looking, they're ready to make a decision. It makes sense for them to move forward with a purchase. Um, Yet there are some some trepidations, maybe some cold feet, and that's certainly understandable, especially when we're dealing with first time home buyers. So what I wanted to do first and foremost is help people understand the kind of the reverse of the time value of money. It's the time cost of money, I, I suppose, with interest rates rising and sales prices increasing. Um, do you want to speak on that for just a little bit, Derek? Absolutely. You know, let's just take take a look at history. Um, you know, you come out of the what we'll call the Great Crash. And interest rates were low, prices were low, people were picking up things for, you know, what in today's dollars kind of seem like pennies on the dollar. And even fast forward to today, 
And if you look at what that cost of waiting for somebody who got in four years ago and how much equity they're sitting on versus somebody who is still renting today, just at what that opportunity cost is over the last couple of years. And then you extrapolate that, meaning like you you take the data and you look at it and you then make it a bigger picture and you see what does the next four years bring. Right. And so we kind of start that this looking at this picture now and we try to develop a plan for somebody that makes sense. Follow me? Absolutely. So... You know, if you just kind of look at generalities, um, our market is increasing at least 5% a year. So if we look at cost of waiting, even if you compare same interest rates, you know, a year from now, house price goes up 5% if we use 250 as an average, which I think is probably pretty, pretty close, um, for the tri county area or, or, or the state at large. Uh, it's probably a pretty good number, especially in the big metros. Um, you know, just that cost of waiting for one year costs you another sixty five dollars a month. Now, just just taking into account the fact that prices go up five percent, five percent a year, and and, and it, so you know, just quick and, side note about the Charleston market: um, the median sales price is up about six and a half percent year to date compared to the same amount of time last year, and uh, the median sales price is sitting at like two hundred and sixty five thousand somewhere around there. The average is much higher, obviously, which is why we use median, not average, because you know, you get a few multi-million dollar properties and it skews the numbers, but you know, the average sales price is at 355. But so, yeah, I mean, in, in generalities, yes, we're, we're talking about numbers that are actually applicable to the Charleston market. And so say that one more time, a 5% increase in the price of the house over the cost of one year is about $65 a month. That's just principal and interest. Your taxes will go up a little bit and your insurance will go up because you know, the, as the value of the home rises, you have to insure it for more. And also, as the value of the home rises, your taxes go up because your taxes are based on purchase price. Correct. And assessed value. Right. And so, you know, the, the, the overall combination is probably 72 or $73 a month, which, again, if you annualize that, that's a big difference. You know, imagine putting $900 a year into your 401k versus $900 a year into extra principal and interest in taxes. Right. And so we're talking with Derek Goulet of Fairway Independent Mortgage, and we're really just kind of breaking down the cost to you associated with, you know, this increase in sales price that we've seen for years now. You know, we've, we've had in many instances double digit increases in median sales prices year over year. Even now we're up, you know, almost six and a half percent in the tri county area. And so let me, let me shift gears and let's talk about the effect on the increase in your payment uh, from interest rates. You know, if we look at this time last year, where were we at interest rates? Last year around this time, we were somewhere in the high threes, low fours. And so if you kind of extrapolate that moving forward with a fairly healthy economy on a national basis, the Federal Reserve raising what we call prime rate, which is the amount of money or the interest rate that they charge to borrow, the banks go to them to borrow money over overnight. Mm -hmm. So as that rate rises interest rates rise. And so if we just also extrapolate price plus interest rate rise, you know, now you're talking almost $180 a month from today versus a year from now. And that's $180 a month higher than a year ago. Wow. And so what, so interest rates today are? Somewhere in the four and three quarters range. And you're using what for next year? Five and a half. Gotcha. So another, another about three quarters of a point increase an overall rate because that's what it's been about over the last year. So we can kind of expect something similar moving yeah, I'd, forward. I'd, I'd say that sounds pretty realistic. I mean, certainly above five, you know, we might even be above five by the end of the year. Don't you think? Oh, very easily. Yeah. We've had days, honestly, we've had days leading up to F federal reserve announcements that we've had rates over five. And people with marginal credit are already over five. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it. You know, we were talking a few weeks ago about, you know, kind of that gold plated buyer that has perfect everything um, being at like four and five eights. Yep. And it's just amazing to see interest rates rise. And so I wonder if, you know, you're a good math guy. So am I. And I'm going to put you on the spot just a little bit here. But let's say that we have a 5% increase in the value of real estate plus a point increase in interest rates. Let's say we went from four and a half to five and a half and that property appreciated 5%. What's like the net percentage increase in that payment? 
percentage increase is probably around 20% because it's, it's pushing $200 a month at that point between with a 1% rise plus a 5% appreciation. And those two combined, if you, again, not getting too yeah. crazy into the math, but it's, it's north of 20% for sure. That's incredible. Oh yeah. I, I mean, imagine, people- imagine having to pay 20% more for your house every month. I would not like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in general, a 1% increase in interest rates is worth what? About a 15 or so percent increase in your monthly payment? About, yes. Yeah. It's incredible. You know, I'll tell you, we have on on my team, uh, we've instituted a few more incentives and one of them actually is working right now. I met with some folks yesterday and we now have a lease buyout program. So if somebody wants to purchase a home. It, it works very well with new construction. If they're in a lease, then if we can, we're going to negotiate them out of that lease early. But in this instance, these folks were in a lease until uh, March 1st of next year. They want to buy a new construction house, but they don't want to be stuck with double payments for mortgages and their, and for their lease. So what we did uh, was we agreed to buy them out of their lease. We are going to make some lease payments for them in return for assisting them with purchasing a new construction home. That way, it's truly a win-win-win. The builder gets to sell something now, which looks good for them. The buyer gets to buy something now before prices go up and before interest rates go up. And we get to help them when we get to earn a commission. That's win, huge. Win-win-win. So, um, and that's just one of several incentives that we have on my team. So if you're interested to learn more about things like that, feel free to give me a call. My number is 843 843- Three four five one two seven three. Again, that's eight four three three four five one two seven three. Or go to listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. And Derek, if people want to reach out to you, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, best way is phone number nine four nine two eight zero eight zero four four. That's nine four nine two eight zero eight zero four four. Call, text, send me a video, whatever. Cool. And you guys can get in touch with me as well because Derek's obviously one of our preferred partners when when people need to get a mortgage or just need advice uh, on the lending side of things. So uh, you can reach out to me or him. Either way, you'll get in touch with him. And we're going to stick around and, and have uh, some more discussion about this. So uh, the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues right here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. It's the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. Broadcast Saturday mornings at 9 and Sunday mornings at 10 on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. 1250 WTMA. Now, here's more of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. Welcome back to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. I'm your host, Brian Beatty, and we're in the studio with Derek Goulet of Fairway Independent Mortgage. We're talking about the the finance side of real estate. And for those of you that are just joining us, we just talked about, we really did a a cool job of breaking down the actual cost associated with the increase in interest rates, as well as the increase in price, which is something we've been seeing in the Charleston market for years now, at least five years, well, much longer than that, actually. But it's been fun to kind of watch this market change and shift and grow and move from what was an extreme buyer's market a decade ago to now an extreme seller's market where, you know, we have 2000 more real estate agents in our market than we do properties available to buy and uh, a month's supply of inventory that is scarce and that's being kind. So um, I want to continue my discussion with, with Derek because he's, you know, he's a, a great partner in my business uh, we send a lot of folks his way. And uh, what I really love about Derek, if I, I'm just going to pat you on the back for a second here, but uh, you take a very consultative approach to working with these folks. And, and that's what we do as well. And I think that's why we work so well together. Uh, so what I want to do now is, is I want to talk about a few things that I think uh, are just misconceptions as it relates to getting a mortgage. And so a lot of, let's start first with something like a down payment. You know, somebody thinks that, 20% down is is what you need in order to get a mortgage. Uh, let's speak to that for just a little bit. I'm going to let you just kind of take the floor for a few minutes and, and tell me what you think about things like that. And some of the misconceptions that you hear on a, I'm sure, daily basis. Yeah, that's, that's actually a great point. Um, I think that 
historically 20% down has always been looked at as kind of that, that golden rule. However, given some of these like innovative products that allow for as little as zero down and, you know, areas that are considered rural, which you and I might actually look at a map and be like, that's not really rural. So there's, there's literally things that are zero down as, as close as John's Island. And then, you know, you get into more of the, the everyday loans and you can do as little as three sometimes three and a half percent down depending on credit scores. And so I think that the misconception and uh, payments are affordable even with the mortgage insurance component of it. Um, And I'll touch on that in just a second because I don't want to confuse people. But so I I think that with innovative products that are in the marketplace today, the misconception that you have to have 20% down to have the perfect loan is, is is no longer reality. Does that make sense? It does. Do you run into a lot of people that are just afraid of not having that much built-in equity into their house based on what we just went through 10 years ago? Absolutely. Um, And that's where figuring out, you know, what works for them in a home and a payment that they can ride out any storm that becomes, you know, it, it almost becomes a back burner item after we've been able to have a discussion about what their real affordability is. Mm -hmm. And again, that consultative approach that you talked about is very important. You've got to ask a lot of questions in today's environment. Right. Because what you see at first glance isn't always true. You know, at first glance, people think you need 20% down. Not always true. Losing equity. If you're going to be there 10 years, it it kind of becomes an irrelevant conversation because any 10-year window over another has always had equity appreciation. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and I want to mention something really quickly, and I'm curious to, to hear your thought on this, but every once in a while, I'll run into somebody that'll say, well, um, you know, why am I going to put, you know, 20% down on it? I have cash. I have the ability to do it. I could put 20% down if I want to, but uh, the interest rate is, you know, 5% and I could, I could potentially invest that money and make more with my cash. So why do that? My question is this. People have kind of learned how to say things like that, and it sounds great, but if you're not out investing that cash and getting a, you know, seven and a half, eight percent return on your investment or more, because remember, you have to pay taxes on your income, right? Put it into your mortgage. Yeah. I mean, do you get into that with them? I do. Um Again, it's about learning, you know, that, that initial consultation, really learning what's important to somebody, you know, is it, is it monthly payment? Is it cash on hand? What's important to them? You know, what is their savings ability and figuring out the structure that works for them? So let's keep going on this topic, not not necessarily down payment, but what about things like credit score? Uh, Again, another misconception. And oftentimes people think that their credit is either A, better or B, worse. You, you you kind of run into two categories where a lot of people think their credit is worse than it is and then you start talking to them and you know they realize oh my credit actually isn't as bad as i thought and so you know at fairway we are a very big direct lender and we have very few overlays um you know people with as low as 580 credit scores can actually get into homes um 580 typically we'll do those under the VA as long as somebody served our great country Right, And then um, some of the lower down stuff, it's either 600 or 620. And so the misconception that you have to have really good credit um, kind of goes out the window, especially once we have a conversation and figure out, you know, if this is something that makes sense for them. You know, there's there are some buyers that it doesn't make sense to buy today, but that's where you take the, the consultation approach and then you set them up on the path and you check in with them and you make sure that they have their, their, moving towards that path of home ownership if that's what they want for themselves. Right. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on The Big Talker, and I'm speaking with Derek Goulet of Fairway Independent Mortgage. Um, And so I want to touch on one more thing, Derek, before we take another break here. But you have seen, obviously, how my team works and and how we approach the process of helping somebody buy a house. Um, What are some tips that you can offer to listeners uh, to prepare for the process of obtaining a mortgage? You know, I would say start by really like understanding your current employment and where 
all of your money currently is. You know, the the worst thing that we have is somebody thinks that they are one thing, you know, i.e. They, they make more money than they do or they make less money than they do and they think that they either have more or less money than they really do. So just try to take a general look at, you know, money in the bank, 401ks, and how your pay is. And then... You mean like W-2 or 1099? W-2 or 1099. And then really just picking up the phone and, and calling us so that we can have that consultation with you to figure out where you're at today and what you need to do to either move forward today or move forward tomorrow. Right, right. And when people do that... Just while we're on the topic of misinformation and misconceptions, because that's what I'm going to talk about the second half of this program. There are some amazing instances very recently where, you know, I went to a website and uh, just looking around for something that kind of inspires me to talk about things with you guys here on this program as I've been doing for the past five years. And there it is, front and center, the first article on Realtor.com um, written by... And I'm, I am going to throw this person under the bus because I don't care because this makes me sick. I, I re- it really grinds my gears. But here's an article at the top of Realtor.com, a website run by the National Association of Realtors, a, an entity that I pay money to every year. And we have an article written by a essentially a failed screenwriter, um, now turned kind of journalist, And the topic of her article is what I've learned after visiting over a hundred open houses in a year. And it's a buyer that's going, she saw over a hundred open houses before she bought something. And so you have to ask yourself the question of, is that really the type of person that I should be taking advice from? And I'm going to get into that a little bit later on the program. That's maybe just a little teaser, but um, just on the topic of misconceptions and, and, the plethora of misinformation out there, um, aside from them just picking up the phone and calling you and understanding where their money is and how they're paid, is there anything else that you want to add to that list? Um, Maybe not necessarily about getting ready for a mortgage, but just about the process of buying a home in general that you think is important to share with our audience. I would say that it's probably a lot less scary than you think it's going to be. Um, You know, having a conversation with somebody is really not scary. And so the more information that you can gather, the more informed you can be. And so as uh, from a consumer's perspective, I would say that approach all of this eyes wide open and just start with a conversation because the conversation leads to knowing you. Knowing you is where we get to help you. Right, right. And so just, again, it's really not as scary as you think it's going to be talking to somebody about your credit, talking to somebody about your goals in a house, which is where you guys come into play. I mean, just really learning what's important to them in a house and making sure that what you're looking at fits that. And again, it's really not scary because you're getting to tell somebody about what you want. Well, and I think a lot of the fear comes from uh, what we've been led to believe in that, hey, if I call a lender and I have a conversation, they're going to pull my credit and that's going to hurt my credit score. Yeah, and that's a big misconception. Um, Not every conversation leads to a credit pull. Right. I mean, it just, it doesn't have to plain and simple. Um, and truthfully, a mortgage credit pull is really only about three to five points on your credit score. And then, you know, you get into the misconception of, well, every mortgage report, every mortgage pull is the same. And they actually, the, the credit bureaus give some leeway to all mortgage inquiries within a certain window so that they don't all count as one. So it's not like if you talk to 10 people and 10 people are in your credit, you're getting 30 points to 50 points. It's not, it's not like that for mortgages. So gotcha. Well, Derek, I really appreciate your time. And of course, uh, love being in business with you. You do a great job of helping our clients and, um, vice versa. So, uh, Derek, if people want to get in touch with you again, what's your contact information? Uh, phone is usually the best. I typically answer it. It's 949-280-8044. And again, that's 949-280-8044. Awesome. And if you guys need to get in touch with Derek, you didn't get uh, to a pen in time to write that down, you can always give me a call, 843-345-1273. That's 345-1273. Or visit my website, listingsincharleston.com, where I have every radio show I've ever recorded here on WTMA in that site. 
And of course, you can learn more about buying or selling or investing in real estate with my team. So listingsincharleston.com, and I'll put you right in touch with Derek Goulet of Fairway Independent Mortgage. And thanks a lot, man, for being on the program. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, stick around, Charleston. We'll be right back with more of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. Visit Brian Beatty's website at listingsincharleston.com. The Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues next on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. 1250 WTMA. You're listening to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. Welcome back, Charleston, as the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. Just had my good friend and business partner, Derek Goulet, on the uh, on the air to talk about a few things, really. The misconceptions out there as it relates to obtaining a mortgage, down payment, interest rates, uh, all that fun stuff. And then we also broke down the cost associated with the increase in interest rates we're seeing, the increase in prices that we're seeing in the Charleston area. Uh, to help you guys better understand what it truly costs you to kind of wait to make a decision. If you're ready to buy a house, if you're ready to move, it makes sense for you to do so, yet you decide to wait. That's the effect of you waiting. It's not meant to uh, push you into a decision if you're not ready for one. It's meant to help you understand that if we've got a 5% in- percent increase in pricing and mortgage rates go up by 1%, that means your payment on a monthly basis, has just increased by 20%. Actually, a little bit more than that. So that's a big shout out to Derek Goulet of Fairway Independent Mortgage for being on the program. Um, Great guy. And if you guys want to reach out to him, then the best way to do that is really just to contact me at this point. Um, And I'll put you right in touch with him. My number is 843-345-1273. That's my cell, 843-345-1273. Or go to listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com where you can learn more about myself and my team. You know, I mentioned earlier in the program, our our lease buyout program, wherein if you're stuck in a lease, we'll help negotiate you out of it and we'll help pay a few of your lease payments in return for helping you buy a house. Yes, you heard me right. We will pay some of your lease payments or the penalty associated with getting out of your lease in order for you to buy a new home. So don't feel like you're stuck. There are some options out there. Now, if you're a seller, we have uh, just incorporated a guaranteed sale program. I'm very excited about this. You know, you see these signs for your home sold guaranteed. And really what that means, and and let me just, you know, peel back the curtain here. They're going to offer you 25% less, sometimes more than fair market value for your house. I have a group of investors that wants to buy a thousand houses this year. They're going to buy the home. They're going to put a renter in it. They're going to use that property uh, to pay out uh, a guaranteed ROI for the people that invest in those real estate trusts. What that means to you is that they're only going to take 12 to 15% off of fair market value for your house. It's the best deal out there for a guaranteed sale program. So if we can't sell it and you have to sell, we guarantee you it will be sold because we have investors that are chomping at the bit to buy a property. And guess what? All they want is a 6% return on their investment. That's what they want. They're not here to gouge you. Um, You combine that with our free pre-listing home inspection, all the marketing we do, you can't lose with our team. So feel free to give us a call, 843-345-1273 or go to listingsincharleston.com. So before I go any further, I need to to get something off my chest. And we are experiencing an epidemic in America that is causing a severe severe issue. And that is the lack of quality, trustworthy information. I mean, people are so indoctrinated with misinformation and fake news and ignorance that despite unparalleled access to information, we we as a people are being told what to think rather than thinking critically for ourselves. I mean, you see it on nearly every Facebook post. You see it when you read the comments section on news articles you see it all over YouTube from people that have learned how to you know, generate millions of subscribers, yet the information they provide is more for entertainment value than it is for the betterment of society. I mean, my show is an effort, among other things, to separate fact from fiction, to provide you with quality and trustworthy and applicable information so that you can be an informed consumer. If you don't 
learn how to question the validity of information and do your own research. I mean, you're simply absorbing someone else's opinion as your own. And, and you may as well get in line with the rest of the sheep. And I'm serious. You have to put effort into thinking critically because other people can't do that for you. I mean, we live in an era of instant gratification and we take everything for face value. Here is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. And I am not happy about this article. I'm, you know, I'm usually pretty even keeled and this is a very informative show, but I see stuff like this and frankly, it just pisses me off. This first article from Realtor.com is entitled, What I've Learned from Visiting 100 Plus Open Houses in a Year, uh, which, which appeared on a very reputable website, Realtor.com. And it, here's the deal. It was written by a former screenwriter turned freelance journalist. And does that really sound like someone that's an authority on real estate matters? You know, why, why Realtor.com agreed to post this article is beyond me, but it's a, it's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. And first of all, I would hope that anyone with half a brain would question the opinion and validity of information coming from someone that has visited over a hundred open houses before they bought something. I mean, really? (laughs) This is, this is kind of funny. The buyer says in her first per, first paragraph, um, let me be clear. I am not some overly picky real estate window shopper because I have made offers. I was just outbid where I come from. This is just par for the course. And there are, there are several parts of this article that, that justify why I believe covering this in my show today is one of the best things I can do to help you prepare for the process of buying, selling, and investing in real estate. And I promise you, th- this is not just me complaining for the next 20 minutes. You're going to walk away with this with, with usable, reliable information, but I need to set the stage, right? <laughs> so, so here we go. Um, she, she, this is her first point. Um, it's entitled personal quirks on display, steak sauce, mustard, and hot sauce. These condiments were not in the kitchen as one would expect, but on a dresser in a bedroom of an open house I attended in Queens, New York. Right then and there, I knew I had to get out of that house. Who knows what was going on there, but it was just too weird for me to stick around and ponder the possibilities. So remove all personal items, including family photos, unusual collectibles, memorabilia, and misplaced condiments. <sighs> yes, first impressions are important. But I want you guys to put yourself in my shoes for a minute. Let's say you're a real estate agent. You've taken the time out of your weekend to show some homes to a, a prospective buyer rather than you know spending quality time with your family or uh, doing something productive because we all have personal lives, right? So you show them a house that you've selected for a buyer because you think it fits their needs and it's something that they should be interested enough in to make an offer. And we're walking through the house and everything's going well. And then you walk into a bedroom and the buyer starts talking about condiments on a dresser and they say they need to leave the house immediately. I mean, come on, you would think that person was crazy. And this is the kind of crap that's passing off as advice. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. If, 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 if you can't focus on the house instead of the condiments on the dresser, then, then you need to get your mind right and you need to focus. Or you need to admit to yourself that you're just not a real buyer, at least not right now. I mean, people that truly want or need to buy a house don't focus on the things that are irrelevant. The only thing worse, in my opinion, that, than a buyer kind of instating this kind of behavior is when a realtor does it. And y'all would not believe some of the ridiculous, useless feedback I get from some of these agents after they show our listings. And if you're trying to buy a house and the realtor you've hired is commenting on personal photos, making fun of the seller's decor, and distracting you from the house, a house that you need to buy because it's the right home for you and your family, they are not helping you and you need to find a real professional. But anyways, enough about that. Back to the article. I know. Uh, I just want to make sure that just make sure you're working with a professional realtor, realtor, real estate agent. That's that's all I can say. Now she does make some good points in her article, and, and I, you know, although of course they're fairly elementary in nature, like you know, dark rooms with closed blinds and too many window treatments um, detract from the way in which a, a a person feels when they walk through the house. So yes, open up the window treatments and the blinds and make it nice and open and airy. That's pretty much common sense. 
Um, you know, they also talked about hovering home sellers and their kids. Um, and I can relate to that. You know, they say, hey, if, if you have a showing, leave the house. Um, don't hover. If you're selling for sale by owner, don't hover. Give them enough room to make them feel comfortable while also keeping an eye on them. I mean, I can relate to that. When I bought my house with my wife, we bought it for sale by owner. And we got a heck of a deal because we knew what we were doing and they didn't. It's not my responsibility to help a for sale by owner uh, sell their home for more money when I'm the one buying it. <laughs> okay, so I took full advantage of that opportunity. However, we did not have a single uh, instance when we walked through this house over multiple visits where she was not in the same room as us. And the challenge was this. We wanted to do a bunch of renovations to that house, but we didn't want to tip them off that we had the ability to afford a massive amount of renovations. Because if they're hearing, wow, they're planning on doing all this work to this house, clearly they have the money to either pay more for the property, but even if they, even though we're locked into a contract, if they ask me for repairs, I'm just going to say no because I know that they're going to fix this house up anyways. Why, why as a buyer would I let them know that I'm about to do a bunch of renovations? Tactfully, that would not be a smart move, right? So when you're a seller and you hover, yes, it does distract the buyer. It makes them feel uncomfortable. And that also plays into you know, sellers that require agents to be present during a showing, the listing agent specifically. If you want me to walk around with the buyer and the buyer agent, they're not able to speak freely. It might take another showing or a third showing before they make an offer. Um, There are pros and cons to it. I don't want to get it too far sidetracked here, but uh, I tell you what, when I come back, I'm going to give you a few more instances in which um, you as a consumer need to do a better job of separating fact from fiction and we as an industry need to be doing a better job of policing the information that we put out as something that you can rely on to make informed decisions about buying, selling, and investing in real estate. I'm very passionate about this because this is an educational program. My team is very passionate about professionalism. And uh, I'll tell you what, we're just going to take a break. But if you want to give me a call, you want to talk about real estate off air, you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, give me a call, 843-345-1273. Or go to my website, listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston. Dot com. Stick around. We've got a few more minutes right here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA and the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. Hear the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show every Saturday morning at 9 and each Sunday morning at 10 on 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. 1250 WTMA. Now, the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues on Charleston's Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. Welcome back, Charleston, to the last few minutes of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. You know, I'm, I, I know that I've been passionate about um, things like this in the past, and I know this, this most recent segment, I got a little fired up, but you know what? My real estate team, uh, if you look at my logo, right underneath it, it has three words passion, integrity, and results. And we're getting into the passion part right now because misinformation drives me crazy. And, and I, don't, I don't want you guys to think that I'm just picking apart that person that wrote that article um, because she's turned her home shopping experience into an entertaining story disguised as useful information. And, you know, you go on these websites. You know, here, here's another one. Here's another one from Realtor.com. And it opens by saying this. You know, after living in the same house for a while, it's amazing that you can get used to certain things. A creaky floorboard, for instance. A chipped tile that you've been meaning to replace but haven't gotten around to yet. A doorknob that needs a little coaxing to turn. No big deal, right? Well, these small flaws can be a huge deal breaker when you decide to sell your house. I mean, so you're online reading these articles to help prepare you for the upcoming home sale or, or home purchase and you read a sentence like that. And do you keep reading? I mean, of course, of course you do. You know, what are these hidden things that are clearly causing huge issues for home sellers? You know, what is a buyer? Can I, can I add to the list to potentially derail a sale? You know, what else can I play hardball on and force sellers to cave and buckle under my every demand? And before I, you know, pick this 
article apart as well. Let me just let me just give you a little dose of reality here, okay? It's a seller's market. Inventory is low. It's extremely challenging to find a house that has all the requirements you need, let alone all the bonus features you want to actually buy it. You know, if you think you can approach this process of buying a home with every little thing, and I mean every little thing like this article suggests going your way, you're setting yourself up for heartbreak. It just, that's just is what it is. It doesn't happen all the time. Don't get me wrong. We get fantastic deals for buyers all the time. But if you think you can approach this process as a buyer by thinking that the sellers are going to, you know, bend over backwards to your every demand, you're, you're in for a long road ahead. What you should be doing is focusing on hiring a professional agent that can help get you the best deal possible with the least amount of stress by, by helping you understand what to expect out of this market based on an impressive resume, based on you know hundreds of successful transactions like what we have. We've, we've helped people buy and sell about a thousand properties to the tune of half a billion dollars here in Charleston. And so, you know, here's another example. And I want to kind of finish up this, this, um, Segment. I'm not going to say rant because I think rant has a negative connotation, but I, I'm just going to skip straight to this example. It, it talks about you know the location of your laundry room. And so it says, even if you own a state-of-the-art washer and dryer and plan to bestow those on the lucky buyers, they may not be thrilled with these nice appliances if they're not situated in what they think is the right place. You know, you might be fine lugging laundry to the basement, but don't expect all buyers to feel the same way. Offer to move these things to a new location to warm buyers up. Again, this is what I'm talking about with stupid information. Guess what you've just done? You as a seller have given away something for free. Buyers might be fine with the location of your laundry room, but now they know you're willing to spend money on a perceived issue. So they're just going to apply that to something else. And when you say, wait a minute, I didn't agree to that. Well, guess what? Yes, you did. You're also preemptively drawing attention to something that buyers might not have noticed before. I mean, the better option is to make that offer after the fact in an effort to try and put a deal together. And of course, in order to do so, you have to be working with an agent that's committed to actually monitoring the feedback of your home and talking to agents that show it uh, and acting as a salesman to try and put a deal together. But unfortunately, with all the sellers we work with, the majority of them that were previously listed with other agents before they hired us, this isn't being done. Again, we're, we're, they're taking feedback at face value. They're not digging deeper to see if there's something that can be done to overcome that objection, and that's sales 101. Now, again, this, this specific article on Realtor.com, it does offer some good suggestions. This is not one of them, okay? <laughs> it says the walls of your kitchen. Some people like... No, make that love open kitchens. So if your kitchen currently has four walls, you could be in trouble. Buyers may look at the possibility of breaking down a wall, but be warned, many might not want to do the work or just get a bad first impression of your kitchen so they just move on. If you think your kitchen's four walls feel cramped and is stalling your sale, consider opening it up yourself. Here's how to knock down a wall. (laughs) Oh my God, I think I've made my point. If I haven't, God bless you. That's the Southern way of saying uh, you need some help. Do not start knocking down walls by yourself for the love of God. Get with an agent before you decide to list so we can have a discussion about the projects you should be doing before you list your home for sale, the projects you should not be doing before you list your home for sale, how to properly stage your house for sale, what's gonna make you money, What's not going to make you money? What's going to help you sell your home faster? What's a waste of your time and energy? I mean, I've already told you about all these offers that we have, which is available on my uh, website by just going to contact us. But, you know, we've got the lease buyout program. We have the guaranteed sale program. We have the free pre-listing home inspection program, professional photography, videography, drone, 3D tour, you know, a massive marketing budget, all kinds of great stuff that we can implement to help you sell your home faster and for more money. And of course, also a free staging consultation from a professional stager and designer to ensure that we're demonstrating the most attractive features of your home in order to sell it with fewer showings and for more money. But if you're thinking about selling your house, um, rather than going on some of these websites and reading through these ridiculous articles, as I've highlighted here for you today, 
give me a call. I'm happy to walk you through the process. My number is 843-345-1273. Again, that's 843-345-1273. Or go to listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Enjoy your weekend, and thanks for listening to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. Join us for another edition of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show next Saturday morning at 9 and Sunday morning at 10. Contact Brian Beatty online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Or call him at 843-345-1273. 843-345-1273.